Well, I, I mean, I, I think the, the question with the 1.5 report is, is how you actually uh, treat the response and, mm. and how, you, how you sort of interpret the homework question that the UNFCCC has set for IPCC. Because uh, in some, some people try to boil it down to the issue, is it feasible to meet 1.5 degrees or not? And uh, you know, given that the UNFCCC has said we're going to pursue efforts to 1.5, it will not be helpful of IPCC to come up with a response that says, yes, it's feasible as long as you pursue efforts. And that kind of points uh, you to where it is. I mean, I think the job of IPCC is to produce a useful response to that invitation that obviously came from a very political place in mm. terms of you know, the, the way that the Paris Agreement was put together. So we will need, I think, on the mitigation side, and you have to remember that impacts was the mm. one that was specifically mentioned in the invita invitation rather than mitigation. But the mitigation side, w which I'm on, I think some of the things we will need to consider are there's open questions about when you might hit 1.5 degrees is it 2100 is it eventually uh, do you overshoot and come back again with co what kind of certainty do you want to think about hitting 1.5 degrees mm -hmm. and all of these questions will have to i think uh, actually be addressed there then there are all the kind of issues about uh, you know the kind of measures that that need to be put in place if you were going to hit 1.5 degrees, what kind of roadmap do you need for mm -hmm. demonstrating new technologies, for bringing them to market? So I think there are all sorts, if you break it down, there are all sorts of useful responses that can be produced in response to the UNFCCC's invitation. But it may disappoint some people in terms of the definitiveness of the answer that comes out. But as I say, we haven't even scoped it yet. Mm -hmm. You never mind written the report, so we have to wait for that.